Welcome everybody and thank you for tuning in. I'm Zach Barnhart with the Athletic Department and this is the first video in a series of videos that we are making to help students and their families with the whole college recruiting process to help you figure out um, if you want to play sports in college and if so, how do you get there essentially. And so today, who I have with me is Terry Johnson. And Terry, can you tell everybody what your title is here at the school? Yeah, I'm the director of athletics at LCA, and, uh, and also I run the development operations here. So Terry, my first question for you is what can the athletic department do to help families who are going through the college recruiting process or who want to know more about the college recruiting process what resources can the athletic department give them um, through their whole process and through their trials uh, that they go through? Yeah, Zach, what, what most people need from us and what we can offer is to our LCA families is aid and communication with colleges and really about how the process goes. Um, each one of our coaches is tasked with not only concerning themselves with the student athlete while they're here at LCA, but also what's their life going to be like after they leave LCA. And if that includes sports or has the potential to work, uh, include sports, we ask our coaches to really find out what the kids and the families really desire out of the college experience. We give them um, ways that they can understand uh, how to get an objective, uh, realistic-based, uh, reality-based uh, uh, observation on their talents and what that looks like, what opportunities might exist out there. Those are all internal discussions between coaches and our student athletes and their families. Uh, sometimes it includes me and the family, but a lot of what we can do and the resources we offer in our Next Steps program is that we really help them understand what the college recruiting process really is. For 99% of the kids, it is really recruiting the school. And you start by trying to understand do you want to go away from home? Do you want a big school? Do you want a smaller school? What, what is it that you want out of your college experience as a student? Um, the ball stops rolling at some point and you want to make sure that the decision you've made is a decision of where you want to be for four years. And it's going to give you the, the basis for the rest of your life. And that differs for a lot of different kids. So that's the first thing and we walk them through that process um, if, if so asked. And the other thing that I would encourage LCA families to do is to understand that uh, we try to make sure our kids understand it's not about the level of, of college that you play at. So many kids and families think, I wanna to go to Division I and I wanna, I wanna live the John Calipari recruiting trail kind of life. That doesn't happen for, for a lot of the, of the student athletes uh, across the country. What you should really be doing is understanding that some of the schools or the school that may be the best fit for a kid uh, aren't the schools that have tremendous budgets to go recruiting. And they may love your child, they may love you as a student athlete, but they don't have the means to go out and travel the country looking for kids. Um, but what you can do is as you take that first step, I said, and, and really kind of figure out what kind of situation you're looking for and then seek those out and talk to the coach. Our coaches here at LCA are, uh, you know, to our families are open to that. That's something that I work with our coaches to make sure they know is part of their responsibilities. Um, we are not going to, as a school, get a kid a scholarship or get a kid a, an opportunity to play at the collegiate level. God's gifts to that individual are the largest part of that. Um, what we can do is help them through the process. And so those are where we start with families and kids. And then we work through and, and we have connections at different schools. They come through here. We try to invite them all the time to come here in the different sports. And then we try to help them match those opportunities. And we've had pretty good success. About uh, In my time here, about 13% of each graduating class has uh, signed a letter of intent to play at some level of college sports. Um, and I'm, I'm very proud of that number and um, glad that we're able to do that. But we've been able to help some of those figure out what are the best opportunities for them. So there were two things that stuck out to me as you were talking. And it seemed like first off that LCA families should go to their coaches first. Correct. That's their first point of contact. If you are interested in potentially 
playing in college, go to your coaches, talk to them first. If they need our help, it seems like that's whenever they come to us. But first off, go to your coach and see if they can help you through the process you're going Even through. Even expressing the desire to, so that the coach, because some, some student athletes decide, I want to just be a student in college. And that's another big decision for kids. Kids have to understand, and our coaches are um, trying to make that point that playing sports in college is very different than playing sports in high school. Yeah. In high school, you spend eight hours a day in your classroom. In college, you will spend about three hours a day in your classroom. You will spend about eight hours a day working on your sport in college as opposed to the two or three hours a day you do in, in high school. It is very, and it, that, that goes across all the levels of, of college sports. It is a job, and it is something that takes time, energy, talent, and commitment and desire. A lot of really good student athletes maybe don't have that desire. They want to have that quote unquote normal college experience. Absolutely. That is certainly fine. And um, that is something that really the adults in the, in the equation, the parents and the coaches and the administrators, we have to help our young people discern that. How much do you love the sport? Are you willing to while your friends are going and doing other things, are you willing to be in the weight room? Uh, are you willing to be up at six o'clock in the morning doing conditioning when your friends are sleeping in because they don't have class till 10 o'clock? Those kinds of things are real life things that these, these kids, we try to make sure they understand. Absolutely, that's key. And another thing that you were saying was that generally the families need to reach out to the colleges, to the coaches, to the other programs, the college programs. And what is, do you know what that looks like? Does that just mean contacting their coach? Does that mean contacting their program? Is it just different for every university, every kid? Yeah, it's, it's all over the board. Um, most of our high school coaches have connections at the collegiate level because we've had a number of kids go and play at different places. Um, they know what kind of child they're going to get by and large when um, an LCA student athlete leaves LCA and goes, to, and goes on to college. Um, so the first thing is uh, reach out to the coach and sit down with the coach. And I may be a part of that conversation. One of our assistant ADs may be a part of that conversation. Um, whatever makes sense for that, for that family situation. And say, hey, we really want to do this. A, can you help us figure this out? B, here's kind of the schools that we're thinking. And then the tough, tough conversation sometimes is, does my child have the ability to play at X, Y, or Z level. And that's where the egos need to leave, all right? Because at the collegiate level, coaches make their livings, their families' livings, off of winning and losing in college athletics, regardless of the level of NAIA, D3, D2, or, or D1, NCAA. And so they take it very seriously. And as much as we love some of our, we love all of our kids, but ability level has to be an objective evaluation and um, we need to be the people who speak truth but I wouldn't count on the um, high school coach exclusively to say hey I think this child is this level or that level or whatever get a cross-section of reasonable thoughts of colleges from a sports perspective and then work with the high school coach work with our coach to say hey um, this is within the realm of possibility for your child, but ultimately, just like in business, the market is going to dictate, ultimately, coaches in those programs will dictate. Um, they have that conversation, and then the communication just starts. And I think people will be amazed that it doesn't really start in the freshman year or the eighth grade year. For some elite athletes, it does, and in some sports are a little different um, than, than others, but uh, there, there is a little bit of time. What we also need to help people though understand is there are things you need to do as a family if your child seeks out to play or thinks they may want to play an NCAA institution or an NAIA institution, that there are academic requirements, which by and large our LCA graduates have no problems meeting. But there's also um, what used to be called the clearinghouse, but it's an eligibility center for NAIA or NCAA schools that every student athlete's family needs to fill out before you can receive an offer from a college. That's something else we can do uh, as a school. 
And if they go, to, if our LCA families will go to golcaeagles.org and, um, I'm sorry, .com, golcaeagles.com and look at college recruiting, there are links to those eligibility centers on our website that'll help you understand what they're going to be asking of you in the application process. Okay. So, one thing that you touched on while you were talking right there was kind of when the recruiting process starts and that it's different for every single uh, student athlete and some of them sure it's early on if they're that elite athlete but most people it starts later on um, they can start the whole process fill out the paperwork that kind of stuff but when does it typically start for if I know that I want to play in college when should I start looking um, at colleges? I encourage kids and families to start looking as early as possible at what you want. It's very hard. There's a very different maturity at the freshman age as there are as they become at the senior Absolutely. Uh, senior year. So it's not completely up to them, but to start gauging um, around that freshman year, if that's a desire, um, to start looking at that. And when you're out and you're on your, you're traveling on vacation, swing by campuses, take a look at campuses and just get your child understanding what a college even looks like. Um, as far as reaching out to coaches, um, you can't sign a commitment letter until your junior year. So nothing is in stone at all until you're able to quote unquote sign. Um, you can commit at any time, but I would say that that sophomore, late sophomore year, heading toward the junior year, um, maybe early sophomore uh, year, start really kind of looking in earnest. But keep in mind, children's bodies change a lot during this age, and uh, a child that may, in a sport that may height, may make a big difference or weight or whatever, that may change, and it, it, it probably will change. So don't cement or, or just say it's this or bust, as a sophomore or even as a junior, let God's plan for your child's life be borne out and when God chooses to expose that to you. And, uh, but generally I would say around the sophomore year is when I would start having those conversations and just reaching out, letting coaches know you're even interested um, because uh, recruiting is the lifeblood for any college program and they always want to hear. Um, just be willing to hear that, hey, this may not be the, the place for you. Um, but uh, if they have the ability, there is a place for them somewhere. Yeah, and I'll give a personal story towards that. Um, I graduated from LCA in 2016 and I played soccer um, throughout my whole high school career here and in the middle school. I played on several club teams and I had thought previously in my high school career that I thought I wanted to play in college. And so I started freshman and sophomore years, starting to look around at like Asbury and some smaller schools that were around here. And by the end of my sophomore year, I decided that wasn't for me. And so that may be what your family is going through right now. You may have a student athlete who's an eighth grader, a freshman, a sophomore who believes they want to play in college. But those thoughts and beliefs and opinions, they may change year to year. So my advice to the family as you're thinking over this is to continue to be supportive and continue to talk this over a lot. If you just talk about it once freshman year and then don't broach the subject again, you're not going to know where your student is at and what they're thinking about in terms of playing in college. So continue the conversation, keep it happening, and if you're a student watching this, realize you're not locked in if in eighth grade you decide, I think I want to play in college. That's not necessarily the case. You can change your mind as you go throughout high school. Absolutely. And as a, and as a parent of, of two boys here at LCA myself, I, and one that's just gone through this process, um, I think parent, as parents, we should be excited and proud if our children discern and make adult, com, adult decisions based on good data and thinking it through. They've prayed over it. They've talked to us about it. Even if they come up with a decision that maybe we personally were, gosh, I wish they'd do this or I wish they'd do that. If they're going through that decision-making process properly and maturely, then I think it's incumbent upon us to understand that's what we want. We want our children to grow in their maturity and grow in their faith and so that they can make those decisions down the line. So I, I applaud you for, for, for saying that 
And uh, we have a number of cases. We've had a number of young people who could go and play college sports at one level or another who have decided that's just not for me. I will also tell you that in the four classes that I can speak to, I'm not speaking to last year's, uh, or excuse me, the first three classes of, of my tenure here, um, roughly 25 to 30% of those young people that signed to play college sports decide within that first year, this probably wasn't the best decision for me. And they either stop playing the sport and stay where they are, or they transfer to a, a school and just become a student because they realize, gosh, I don't know that I love the sport enough or something else. But that's okay too, uh, because they don't have that regret of going, gosh, I never knew, I never yeah, realized. Absolutely. Or I never wondered. Uh, it's just different for everybody. So a couple weeks ago, we put out on Instagram um, that we were going to be doing these videos. And if you had, if anybody out there had any questions, just to send them to us so that we could potentially talk over some of them um, during these videos. And I received one that I wanted to bring up in this video. Um, and the whole question was a very straightforward one. Is dance a scholar, or can you get a scholarship in dance at the and, college level? And the answer is a qualified yes. It is not, a, but those are not programs that are uh, abundantly pervasive in the country. But yes, there are dance programs around the country um, who do offer scholarships for dance. Um, and some of those are in dance that you will see in um, an athletics forum, and some of those are more classical. But yes, those are out there, and uh, it's really doing your research online as much as anything else because what may not if you're looking to stay in this an hour radius or somewhere maybe there isn't a program that does that but it there are opportunities out there yes yeah so moral of that story is just do your homework and make sure that you look before you and Al, ali cox our, our dance uh coach from an athletics perspective is somebody who would uh, be able to help um, that person or anybody who's thinking about that and uh, Al is a wonderful young woman who I am sure would uh, help do that research, as would we in the athletic department help you uh, through that process. Um, so last question, do you have any final thoughts or any final um, things you want to say to LCA students or LCA families who are trying to go through this whole potentially playing in college process? Other than I want to reiterate, um, Every child is different, and what they want out of their college experience is different. I've said to a lot of people, we have graduates, whether they play sports here or not, some have gone through LCA and they have a small school experience here at LCA, they have an intimate relationship uh, in the classroom because of the small class sizes, and they love that, and they want to continue doing that. Um, so they may choose to want to go to a small college where they can continue that. And it, in a small Christian school environment or just a small school environment, period. Other children come out of this school and say, you know, I've done the small thing. I want to be like Zach Barnhart and I want to go to the University of Kentucky or I want to go to the University of Texas or I want to experience what that is like. There's no right or wrong in those. Just like there's no right or wrong there, there's no right or wrong on where you end up playing a sport. Is so long as you've gone through the process and really understood why you're making those decisions. So I think egos need to be checked at the door. Um, if you have a desire to first figure out if you have the desire and love of the sport itself, that's the big key. Because if you don't, those 6 a.m. conditioning programs in, in the dead of winter are not going to be something you want to continue. Or the road trip where you get on a bus and you travel to some town you've never heard of to play a game doesn't excite you you when you're talking to your friends and they're going to you know some concert or something while you're on that bus then you really need to ask yourself is the sport what i love or do i just love playing here in high school or do i just love the idea of playing in college um, there's no there's no right or wrong so making that discernment and really understanding god has a plan for your life god has a will for you and seek that out and if the sport is part of it then let's that's awesome let's go find a way to use your talents uh, to glorify god at, a, at the next level um, if not that's okay too but 
you know, we're, we're here to help uh, regardless. And there's a lot of great opportunities for kids to go to different places that they would have never thought about uh, until they went through this process. And I could give example by example um, of kids that have left here and maybe when they were a sophomore thought they were going to be, you know, playing football at, uh, you know, Notre Dame or something, but they, they didn't quite, that, that, that didn't work out. And they went to a small college and had an unbelievable ex experience and it was life altering for them because that's where God had them uh, to, uh, in store to go. That's, that's just really what it, it, it does. We're here to help. We have some materials that you can find on our website at golcaeagles.com. And I just encourage people to do that. Do your research and seek out what God has in store for your student athlete here at LCA. Well, thank you, Terry, for taking the time to be with us. Um, just a heads up for the next video that we do. I will be interviewing Neil Lum, um, who's a great friend of mine, somebody that I graduated with, played soccer with all the way through high school, and um, he now goes to Asbury College. He's a junior there. So we'll go through some of the questions about what he faced as he tried to play sports in college and when he started that whole process and what the process looked like, at least for him. So come back and see us for our next video. Thank you all for spending your time with us.